Do you know what a pocket city is? Well, I didn't either until I moved to Racine. And I didn't understand what things were, what was different here. And it took me a while to figure it out. But this town is different from any other town I've lived in. And I've lived in northern Wisconsin. I've lived in uh, northeastern Illinois. I've lived in Florida. I've lived in Brazil. I've lived in England. So I've lived a lot of different places in my life. And Racine has a really unique layout. Today I'm going to explain not only what a pocket city is, but also why Racine is one and why this city has many different, very specific neighborhoods, even the old areas, and very specific defined boundaries as to where those areas are. Can't wait to get into this with you. So when I first moved to Racine, I knew, of course, like every city, you have different neighborhoods, different makeups, different things about them, etc. But one of the reasons why you, why Racine is so unique is because our city was founded, like a lot of cities that are founded along rivers or um, major archery waterways in the world, um, there's a very definite spot in the center of the city and then the city kind of radiated out from that as far as the history of it. But what made this really, really interesting is that very quickly after the late 1800s, Racine actually got kind of subdivided almost and as the city grew, each section gave itself kind of a name. Now, I don't know when these names came about and I don't know exactly why. I mean, a lot of them, it's pretty obvious why, but it's not like anybody said, oh, we're going to name this and that's why it happened. So first of all, let's talk about the five major areas of Racine. So first of all, you have the downtown area. And as you can see from this map here, um, you can see that I'm gonna draw some lines around the map and you'll be able to see this is basically the downtown area. Now it kind of like squiggles and squabbles its way around a lot of different things, which is a little bit odd, but this is very definitely what most people would consider to be downtown. What makes it really unique is that the next section is actually what they refer to locally as Uptown. Now, I have no idea why this section is called Uptown, and it's very, very tiny, actually. It's not a very big part of the city, but it's very definitely Uptown. And as you can see on the map, again, this is what most people who live in Racine would consider to be Uptown. And it encompasses things like as you come around the corner from downtown and you're heading out towards the interstate, you can see how this road kind of curves. And right at that central junction there, you have a number of storefronts and stores. And I believe it was probably the second wave of storefronts that were developed in the Racine area. And so it became known as Uptown. Now, a lot of that has not really kept up and there's not a lot of actual stores and shops there. Um, there's a great Chinese restaurant there. There's also a really great Punjabi restaurant there, but um, there's a couple coffee shops. Used to be that the corner house historically was in Uptown as well, um, but then that was purchased by another uh, family and moved to a different location. But in the Uptown area, it's very, very small. A uh, couple of bars, um, definitely some industry kind of mixed into it as well at this point. So you've got some small businesses, uh, things of that nature. But you do have a couple of coffee shops. You do have a couple of like the Chinese place and you've got um, the Punjabi food and just, you know, a couple of different nice, decent things. But most people don't spend a whole lot of time just hanging out in Uptown because there's not really shops left there anymore, etc. Now, if we continue going out Highway 20, you're going to see that or what was 14th Street, but is now going to continue going out on the map here. You can see going out 20. The next section of Racine is what we would refer to locally as West Racine. Now, West Racine has a very specific boundary in that West Racine, it starts at West Boulevard or West Street, depending on what part of it you're on, because on one side of 20, it is called one thing and on the other side, it's called another. So, but definitely West Boulevard, West Street, that that right there, that is 
where West Westracine starts. And Westracine goes directly all the way to Lathrop Avenue if you go up 20. It also has very clearly defined boundaries. And as you can see on the map, it is actually one of the most square sections of Racine. A lot of the rest of Racine is kind of like squiggly lines around the neighborhood type of a thing. But West Racine is one of the most squarely defined areas of Racine. And now West Racine does have, and I believe this was like the third wave of, so to speak, shops and things. As people were moving outward from the city, they didn't want to have to go all the way downtown for their items. And so you, you know, they had a couple of things here. At one point, um, there was a grocery store here. Uh, there's still CVS. Uh, there's still a really great market on weekends or some weekends. Um, or I'm not sure about the dates on those, but anyway, there's a really great like open market. That's a lot of fun that people are really enjoy in the summertime. Um, you do have a couple of other really great things. Things. There's a great PC shop here, Harbor PC. Um, there is actually Russ's very, very favorite coffee and tea place called Wilson's Coffee and Tea. And also Russ gets his hair cut by Bob the Barber right across the street here. I'm going to point out Bob. Bob is one of those really cool old school barbers. So if you've never been in there, you should really stop in and say hi to Bob and tell him that Kimberly and Russ sent you just to say hi. Um, Bob has been around for a very, very long time. And unfortunately, a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago, he um, had some people come into his shop who were not very friendly and were not very nice. And the community kind of, and they actually robbed him, beat him up. And the community very much rallied around Bob because Kind of a lot of people in Racine know Bob. Even if they don't get their hair cut there, their dad might have uh, used to get their hair cut there, or he's just kind of legendary. And if you walk in his shop, it will be very clear very quickly that Bob, although he lives in Racine, Wisconsin, is not a Milwaukee Brewers fan. He is actually a Cubs fan. So stop in and see Bob. But you can see Bob is in West Racine. Right next door to him, there's an embroidery shop that a lot of people use. There used to be a shoe repair shop here as well, but and that was amazing. But again, that family kind of aged out, sold off the business, you know, was no longer really viable anymore because not a lot of people get their shoes repaired um, like they used to. Now people just replace their shoes. Uh, but you've got some really great shops here. You've got a really beautiful venue that used to be a church over here as well. So you can see there's a lot of really cool things in the West Racine area. And the West Racine area has some very specific um, architecture to it. What we're going to be doing in this series is we're going to not just explain um, the neighborhood, but we're actually going to go a little bit more in depth on each neighborhood um, in, an, in an individual video where I'll just talk about just the things in West Racine and the architecture and show you some of that, the parks, the things that are available. And we'll be doing that for every single neighborhood in Racine. Now we're going to go back downtown a little bit because now we're going to head in two different directions. So there's two other major sections of Racine that we want to talk about in this particular video. One of them is North Side. And the north side is, well, it's the north side. Once you exit downtown Racine, um, going north on Main Street, you will find yourself um, after probably about, I don't know, 10, 15 blocks, because part of that is considered still part of downtown. But once you get about 10 blocks outside of downtown, you get to what's called the north side. And the boundary for that is Gould Street. Um, and then you've also got uh, the Racine Zoo on the north side and some other really cool amenities. You actually have a lot of shopping over on Douglas once you get into the north side and it's a because Douglas is a major arterial road that leads out of Racine so you've got some really cool stuff. When we get to the north side video that is just about the north side it's going to take me forever to do that video because there's so much on the north side. Now you can see the boundaries of the north side kind of go from Gould and Douglas and over that area and then they just kind of creep up and around and get up to about three mile road just before Caledonia um, where which starts right around three to four mile road. Um, you do also have Wind Point tucked away. We'll probably do a video about that in the future but for now we're just going to focus on the Racine areas because we've got plenty to cover there. So if you come south though on Main Street, so instead of going north and going to the north side, 
Let's go south. And now we're at the south side of Racine. Now, what's interesting about this is that it's, again, it's not immediately outside the downtown area, which you could see in my map, but it is basically anything south of the SC Johnson building. So basically from 16th Street south. But then it also goes a bit west as well. And it kind of sprawls around West Racine on the outskirts. And um, as you can see, so it, you've got everything from Main Street coming from downtown um, and sit like Main Street and 16th, that corner right there is really significant. Um, although some people would argue that maybe 14th is part of the South Side because you have some really cool buildings on 14th and 15th on the college and Wisconsin area. So there's a little bit of controversy as to whether it starts at 14th on that section or whether it starts at 16th. But I think definitively, we can definitely say that it, and definitively, we can definitely say, yeah, of course, if you're gonna definitively say something, then it's definite, duh. Anyway, um, so from 16th Street though, definitely on south of there until you get to Mount Pleasant. And you can see the boundary here on the map where Mount Pleasant starts. And when Mount Pleasant starts, that's a whole nother city. And we are gonna do some videos on Mount Pleasant as well, because Mount Pleasant is part of the greater Racine area. But then the south side is really, if you think the north side has some interesting boundaries, look at these boundaries on the south side. And as you can see with uh, my mouse moving over the map here, you can see how this south side area right here is a very, odd like kind of zigzaggy sort of thing that doesn't encroach on West Racine but does have a very zigzaggy pattern until you get close to Elmwood Park or Mount Pleasant and things like that. So that's what's considered the south side. Now there so still are a couple of other areas we're going to talk about. Um, one of them is Manry Park. We'll talk about that in a different video. And there's another area of Racine that is not covered by any of these categories. It's not uptown, downtown, north side, south side, west Racine. It's not even part of Manry Park. It's just kind of this no man's land that nobody wants to claim. And I've asked multiple people over and over, hey, what is this section of town called? And everybody's like, oh, no, it's not. It's basically from Lathrop and um, 16th Street, essentially. And it goes kind of uh, southwest towards that area. So down towards the mall and things of that nature. It's definitely not part of West Racine. It's definitely not considered to be part of the south side of Racine, but it's just kind of this no man's land. So we're gonna claim it as our land, I think. We really like that section of town. We saw a lot of houses over in that area. Uh, most of those were built in the 1960s, but we'll talk about that. We'll talk about no man's land, as I call it, um, in a different video. But hopefully this has been really helpful. Oh, but wait. If you do have find any value in this, do us a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell, of course. Now, if you don't find any value, please let us know. Put a comment below and tell us what you would like to hear about because that's actually what we're here. We're here about kind of explaining Racine and showing different people the different parts of Racine. And if you have a great idea or something you think we need to highlight, absolutely put a comment down below that says, what should we highlight in Racine? What neighborhood is your favorite neighborhood in Racine? Or do you not like any of them at all? Because there are those people out there. But anyway, um, lastly though, of course, we don't want to forget, what is a pocket city? See, I'm not a clickbait person. I'm not going to just tease you at the beginning and not explain that to you. So what makes Racine super interesting is the fact that it is what I call a pocket city. I don't know any other description to give it other than a pocket city. But basically what it means is that Racine has these areas. And if you go from on one side of the street, you're considered in one neighborhood that might be considered a preferred because there is no such thing as technically a good or bad neighborhood. There are only good or bad neighbors, technically. But obviously, if a neighborhood is filled with bad neighbors, then that's not such a great neighborhood and a lot of people don't want to live there. But you can literally go from on one side. So for example, 16th Street is a really great example of this. On 16th Street in West Racine, because West Racine goes to 16th Street, 
and then it stops right there. If you cross south onto off of 16th Street, you go on the south side of 16th Street, that is not considered part of West Racine. And that area over there is not considered part of that neighborhood at all in Racine. So literally, house prices could be anywhere from fifty to seventy-five thousand dollars different on in West Racine than they could be right across the street in a neighborhood that is referred to locally as rubber well, Rubberville, or even if you go further up um, 16th Street into what we would call no man's land, you've also got a really big difference between the pricing of houses on one side of the street and a pricing of houses on the other side of the street. Again, you have Highway 20 or you have Manry Park, which purists would say Manry Park is only two streets long and very confined to a very short area. There are other people who kind of stretch it a little bit further. We'll talk about that more when we get to that video. But it's very pocketed in that literally you can cross over from one side of a street to another side of a street and you're considered to be in a different neighborhood and a different price point for your home. Even though the taxes aren't different, there's a local perception that just makes some, some sides of streets preferred over others. Another good indication of this is when you get to the College Wisconsin Park and that area uh, and Main Street of the south side of Racine because there's a very different vibe to College Wisconsin and Park than there is to Villa and um, the other ones that come west of that. So it's a totally different type of neighborhood even though they're both considered the south side of Racine. So a pocket city is a city where it's like this little pocket of preferred neighborhood that might be set right in the midst of a pocket of, of a bunch of neighborhoods that are non-preferred, but it's a pocket that people love. And then you'll have another pocket over in this section and another pocket over here. And it's just the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. So for example, um, one side of Highway 20 is going to be considered better than others. Uh, there are sections of Douglas where one side is considered better than others. Uh, High Street is another part where even though it's still not part of the north side at that point, if you are north of High Street, you have better property values than you do south of High Street. Once you reach Gould, again, you're going to have better property values north of Gould than south of. When you get to Three Mile Road, again though, you have this really bizarre pocket. And a lot of it has to do with whether houses are owner occupied or whether they are rentals. So this is why I and my husband as well, Russ, we both refer to Racine as a pocket city. We've never seen anything like it. Other cities that we work in this area like um, Mount Pleasant and Caledonia, they don't have quite the pocketed demark like very strict demarcation zones over what are considered preferred versus non-preferred neighborhoods. Now, I actually believe that you should buy in a neighborhood in which you feel comfortable and you shouldn't necessarily worry too much. In fact, you might find a bargain in some of the non-preferred areas of a city, but I digress because a pocketed city is one of these things where you have these pockets of preferred right in the middle of non-preferred areas. And it's just the most interesting thing. And it's very difficult to explain to people who don't live and grow, did not grow up in this area why one side of 16th Street is great and the other side is going to be of lesser value to them. Or that they shouldn't pay as much for a house on that side of the street because it won't hold a value that is far too high. So anyway, it's a very, very interesting thing to live in the pocket city of Racine. And I look forward to talking to you more about each of these neighborhoods and giving you um, some more details on each neighborhood as we go. So thanks for joining me. Have a great one. Bye.